for the long hours that you will be in that plane. And noise is a key thing, and there's a lot more on this uh, slide, but what I want to really emphasize here, that air conditioning systems, the piping, the ducting that we do in there, the nacelles, the chevrons, the engine vibration, all these things in an airplane contribute to the noise, and we have taken care to minimize every one of those so that when you are flying in this airplane, you're going to feel a lot quieter, and that is really one of the key things when you will notice when you fly. And again, we have enhanced the cabin. As I said, um, there is a technology we can use, but it all depends on regulations and all about using cell phones and PDAs. You can do broadband. We had a program called Connection by Boeing that didn't work, but certainly you have that technology. You can do internet in the airplane. You have ethernet based cabin services system. You can have, oh, dimmable windows. This airplane doesn't have the shutters like all airplanes have. You press a button and the windows will be dimmed. And you press a button, they'll become brighter. Why is that important? I'm sure if you fly, for example, which I do often London to Seattle, you're going to fly in the daylight. You leave at 9 in the morning, say, from London, you get to Seattle at noon. So for the entire 10, 11 hours, you are in the daylight. And obviously, your body says it's nighttime. And there's always somebody who wants to read a book, so they won't close their window, and there is going to be a bright light right next to you. What you can do, the flight attendants can go and dim the windows to a certain level so you can have at least some pleasant condition inside the aircraft, and then that passenger still has outside connection. If they want to see outside and look at the mountains or whatever they want to see, they can still see them. So it's a win-win situation for both passenger types. Okay, let's come into the flight deck real quick. And I'm keeping an eye on the clock. This is the flight deck. You saw a picture earlier, but very simple flight deck, very nicely done. A uh, lot bigger screens in terms of uh, LCD type displays and a very modern. It's been now certified and we have begun some initial training on this particular flight deck on the simulator. And this is what I was talking to you earlier about. What we're trying to do is a pilot today that flies a triple seven. He can be trained within five days to fly the 787. And then we are also trying to see if we can get from FAA a common type rating with the 777. I'm sure some of you know this. Our 57 and 67 had a common type rating. Similarly, we try to get this on the 87 and 777. That will be a huge boon for the airlines because they can put a pilot in the morning on the 87. He comes back, goes to bed next morning, he can fly a 777. Great way to utilize your very expensive resource of pilots because that is something is not that easily available and pilots, as you know, cost a lot of money. So what else we have done? Some quick things, the flight crew rest. Today, if you fly many airlines, you will see in the first class or business class, they block off two seats for the pilots, okay? Not a good thing. You could be making money if the flight is full by selling those seats. So what we've done is most people probably know this. About the crown of the airplane, there is a lot of space. In fact, there is six, seven feet of clearance that is completely unused. And what we have done there is we have built an overhead flight crew rest. And by the way, this is there today on the 777s of both Jet Airways and Air India. And these people can go there. They can occupy these seats during landing and takeoff. And so if you have extra crew, which you have to have under FA or DGCA when you fly 15 hour flights, you cannot just have two pilots. You can have up to four pilots. The two extra pilots can be in the jump seats, or they can be in this relaxed environment up there, and thereby you increase your revenue by one or two seats, depending on whatever the option you choose. You can do the same thing for the cabin crew, and we have done this. Uh, the cabin crew seats are in Air India's flight. They have six cabin crew on the top. They have very comfortable private environment, and thereby you can have more cargo, or you can have more passengers and not cut into your revenue, which is crucial to the survivability of any airline. And just talk about a couple more points, and we'll come to a conclusion here. Just I made only one comparison chart. I just don't want to uh, dwell on comparisons. But certainly, if you look at this airplane compared to any other previous airplane, and a similar chart on the 6-7 will be also true, you will have, over 12 years, 50 more flying days out of this airplane because the A check interval is 12 fewer line checks. It will have five less base C checks during the span of 12 years, and you'll have one less heavy maintenance check or the D check on this aircraft. 
So that is why you can make this airplane more productive and keep it in service rather than put it in the hangar where you don't make any money and it costs you money to keep paying for fixing that airplane. This one I just want to tell you, uh, we found over the years in my, I've been in Boeing 30 years, about close to 30 years now. First 10, 15 years we saw once you take an airplane, nobody changed anything. That's how the airplane flew for a number of years. But today with the competition and full flat beds and cabins like Jet Airways has, the technology is changing, the comfort level is changing, the competition is making you change. And to change interiors in the older days used to cost a lot of money. Why? Because these are all hard fixed monuments and if you want to change them, boy, you have to pay millions of dollars to redesign and redo the structures and everything. On newer airplanes, including 777, what we are doing, we are mounting things so that if you change the pitch of an aircraft, like instead of 30 inch seats in economy, you say, okay, I want to make 33. Not, not a problem, you just do, it'll take you typically a day or two, and it's routinely done. I'm sure you saw Jet Airways, you can't, a business class used to be very tight about two years ago, now they're spaced in back. They used to get in a hangar in the night, and about 24 hours later, all the seats were repitched because it's much easier to do that because the connections and all the different things we have done. What we have done is given a lot of attach points both at the ground and also for pneumatics at the top in the uh, passenger service unit, so thereby they can change that. Similarly, if you repitch the wiring, it used to be the biggest complicated problem. If the wire bundle is only, say, two feet long, and now you want to pitch it to three feet, you have to create all new wire bundles, which can be a lot of money, and completely rewire the airplane. Now we're doing it much simpler. We have flexible wiring lengths already built in. We have IFE modules. You just remove the fitting covers, repitch the airplane, put the modules back in, and bingo, you have done your repitching of the entire aircraft. All these things we learn from the airlines. We know where they, what they are going through. They want the flexibility. So we are designing the aircraft to support those flexibilities. Environmental, okay? I can do that. I'm literally in the last two minutes now. Okay, so cleaner, quieter, and more efficient. We talked about that. Green airplane and engines. Again, I want to just give you, for those who are interested, I'll just show the footprint that I mentioned about. This is the noise profile, okay? QC1 is what it needed in uh, London for departure. For arrival, it's QC half, and you can see how much below those departure times they are. And with that, as I promised, it will come into uh, basically the state of the program. And I'm going to run through real quick pictures, and I'm done here. What I'm showing you here is the where the airplane is, what stage it is, all this testing and all that's going on, because Really, uh, while people know it's being delayed, I just want to leave the feeling that a lot of things are going on. We have done the test of high blow. We have done a lot of fatigue tests, and everything is moving along the line direction. This is the assembly line, and we've done some certifications, and here comes the summary, which is, again, back to where we were. We have done the design. Now we have to prove the flight test, which will begin the next quarter. And we'll, I'm sure we all will be delighted to fly next year. Thank you very much, Dr. Matt.